Access. And we're in! So hacking has been a popular topic for a long time, especially in the last few weeks with the internet's recent Heartbleed vulnerability that left millions of people's information open to hackers. But many people don't know that there are actually two types of hackers. The first kind are called white hat hackers, which are the ones that are ethical and do things like diagnose security flaws. But the second kind are called black hat hackers, and those are the ones that commit cyber crimes for financial gain or just to cause major damage for the lulls, and that's the group that this video is about. So this week, I gathered the smart smartest and most destructive black hat hackers that have ever lived to share with you guys. So here they are, the 10 most notorious hackers of all time. Number one is Kevin Mitnick. Kevin Mitnick is considered the poster child of computer hacking and was once the most wanted cyber criminal in the world. He had an obsession with computers that escalated into a two and a half year hacking spree where he stole millions of dollars of corporate secrets from IBM, Motorola, telephone companies, and even the National Defense Warning System. He was caught and jailed twice for his crimes, but is now a computer security consultant and published author. Interestingly, he always preferred the term social engineer over hacker, which is weird because let's just call it what it is, he was a hacker. That's like calling a cannibal an intraspecies diner. Yeah, it doesn't work. Number two is Vladimir Levin. Vladimir Levin was a Russian hacker of genius proportions. In 1994, while working with a dial-up connection and a laptop from his St. Petersburg apartment, he accessed the accounts of several large corporate customers of Citibank, stealing $10.7 million. He ended up spending spending three years in jail after his accomplices gave up his name and was forced to give back the 10.7 million he stole, although 400,000 of it was never recovered. However, oddly, a decade later in 2005, an anonymous hacker group came out claiming that they were the ones truly responsible for the theft and that they only sold Vladimir the data needed to steal the money. Well, we may never know the truth, but what we do know is somebody got away with $400,000. Just remember kids, crime doesn't pay. Unless you're a Russian hacker supervillain, in which case it apparently does. Number three is Matthew Bevan and Richard Price. In 1996, Matthew Bevan and Richard Price were only 21 and 17 respectively when they broke into military computers with a really nefarious intent. They not only hacked into US military computers, but officials thought they might have also hacked into North Korean systems as well. This was especially bad since there were very high tensions between the two countries at the time, and an intrusion from the US could have been considered an act of war. Now luckily as it turns out, it was just South Korea Korean data, but it just as easily could have been North. You know, unlike regular hackers that just steal money or create viruses, these douches have the unique distinction of saying that they almost started a war. Yeah, not exactly the type of thing you want to put on a resume. Number four is Michael Kals. Also known by his hacker alias Mafia Boy, Michael Kals was a Canadian from Quebec that was responsible for a series of high profile cyber attacks in 2000. Project Revolta, as he called it, was a distributed denial of service attack that took down major websites like Yahoo, FIFA, Amazon, eBay, and CNN among others. He was caught after bragging about the attacks in an IRC chat room for which he got eight months in jail. Why such a short sentence? Because surprisingly Michael was only in high school at the time. Also because he probably said sorry sorry oh so sorry didn't mean to hack him eh sorry through the whole trial. He's Canadian, we're very apologetic people. Number five is Adrian Lamo. Adrian Lamo is best known for hacking into major corporations like Yahoo, Bank of America, Citigroup, The New York Times, and Microsoft, but it's the way that he did it that made him famous. He used public internet connections like those found at libraries and coffee shops to hack into these major sites. Because of that and his modest lifestyle, he was given the nickname of Homeless Hacker. In 2004, after being caught, he was given six months house arrest in order to pay $65,000 in restitution. Well, I guess if there's a silver lining to the story, it's that somebody actually used a library. I mean, who the hell uses libraries anymore? It's 2014. If you need to learn something, you just Google it. Number six is Jeanson James Anchetta. Jeanson James Anchetta was the first ever hacker to create a botnet, a group of hijacked computers that worked together for illegal means. In 2004, Anchetta spread a worm called the RX bot across the internet that gave him control of 500,000 computers, including US military computers. He used that network to wreak havoc on websites, shutting them down, and even even accepted payments from clients to shut down specific websites. And that worked well for him until one of the clients ended up being an FBI sting operation. He was forced to give up his BMW and $58,000 that he earned from hacking and was ordered to pay $16,000 and serve 60 months in prison. How ironic, this guy forcibly gave a lot of people a worm and now he's going to jail where a lot of guys are gonna forcibly give him their worm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Number seven is Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon is a Scottish hacker who 
masterminded the largest military computer hack of all time. Using the hacker alias Solo, he hacked into 97 US Armed Forces and NASA computers between 2001 and 2002. Within a period of just 24 hours, he deleted critical files including weapon logs, crashed a network of 2,000 computers, stole passwords, and copied files. In total, the damage that his hacking caused cost the government an estimated $700,000 for which he was indicted by a US court. However, in 2012, it was decided that he will not face charges in the UK, nor be extradited to the US to face charges there either. So in other words, he got away with it scot-free. Damn, that's a dangerous precedent you just set, UK. If I were you, I'd expect an influx of hackers immigrating to your country. Better stock up on Mountain Dew and Hot Pockets. Number eight is Owen Walker. Owen Walker, also known by his hacker alias A-Kill, was only 17 when he led an international hacking group that caused over $26 million in damages. The homeschooled teenager was responsible for creating the Akbot virus, which spread to 1.3 million computers around the world, crashing them. But the surprising thing is that even though he was caught, despite all of the damage, he was released without being convicted. It was ruled that a conviction would do more harm to his future than do good. Today. Owen works for a telecommunications company in their security division. See parents, you should homeschool your kids. They always turn out well adjusted. Number nine is Astra. The hacker named Astra, whose real name was never revealed, was a 58 year old Greek mathematician who was operative between 2002 and 2008. During that five year period, he stole weapons technology data and 3D modeling software from a company called the Dassault Group, which he sold for up to $361 million to buyers around the world. Dassault, being just a bit ticked off by the theft, went on a worldwide manhunt for Astra, which ended in tracking him down to an apartment in Athens. Greece. This is a really cool story, but I don't understand why they won't just say his name. I mean, who is this guy, Voldemort? Wizards be hacking and shit. It's messed up. And finally, number 10, Albert Gonzalez. Of all the hackers on this list, Albert Gonzalez may have pulled off the largest heist. Over a two year period, he stole a total of 175 million credit card numbers, selling them online. A massive yet undisclosed amount of money was stolen from his victims through identity theft, leaving them to battle to restore their credit ratings and get their money back. He was sentenced to 40 years in jail, and I say good, he deserves it. My credit card information was stolen once, and I was pissed. Not because they spent my money, but because I had to call Visa and explain to them that it wasn't me that spent $200 at a men's hair care website. It was an awkward conversation. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. Keep in mind that this was not an exhaustive list. There were a lot more hackers out there that have done a lot more stuff. I just chose the ones that I felt were the most interesting cases. If you'd like to add me to Facebook and Twitter, the links to those will be in the description along with all my other social networking sites. And other than that, I will see you guys back here next Saturday with a brand new video. See you next week, turd nuggets. Hey, welcome to the outro screen. Mm, JP's the man. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry about that, it happens sometimes. Thanks for watching my new video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to click the big red subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel. I release a new video every Saturday. And while you're at it, maybe click the like button and share this on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. It's all appreciated. And if you didn't understand any of the references that I made in this video, such as the turd nugget thing, I highly recommend you watch the movie Grandma's Boy. You'll understand after you watch it. Just JP is the man. That's all I can say. So have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Peace.